Welcome to the show today. And what I wanna do is a little video that's going to take a absolute beginner and introduce you guys to a product that I've used for over 10 years, but because it has not been readily available for 10 years, up until recently, I have not done much about it to introduce it to you guys, but it's what I call my sure thing. Clear Coat Solutions, CSI for short. So what was the beauty of this moment where you said, I said, hey, you didn't follow our lead and you said the words of the fact oh, of- Oh, can you teach me how to do it or can you show me? Yeah, but you didn't know anything. Yeah, I don't know You're anything. like, I don't know anything. Yeah, yeah. So just show me, right? Right, yeah. So what we have here is a test panel. This is a hood, it's on a, a rolling rack. And what I've done is I've put in 2000 grit sanding marks. I've created what is called a uniform scratch pattern. So literally when it comes to polishing paint, you are scratching your way to success. Now the industry would have you believe that you need four, five, whatever X amount of compounds in order to gradually scratch your way to perfection. Then they want you to believe that you need two, three or four different types of polishes to refine that more aggressive scratch pattern into a finer and finer scratch pattern so the eye cannot discern or interpret any type of scratches and the paint looks flawless. The unique thing about this is that one, it's not a compound. It's not like throwing boulders at your paint to try to correct uh, paint blemishes and flaws. It is a polish with highly refined abrasives in it that is counter to the diminishing abrasive technology. This is what I call controlled abrasive technology. You, you remain in control and it's a single product polishing system. Another thing that's very unique about it. So I want to take this absolute beginner. So answer me this. Have you ever even touched a rotary polisher? No. Okay. You hardly even knew the difference between a dual action and a rotary polisher, right? Right. So the simple answer, or the simple definition is this. A rotary spins on a single axis point. All it does is spin. Okay. Most guys are terrified of this because there's all these stories about like burning uh, edges, right. uh, buffer trails, buffer tracks, swirl marks, mm -hmm. holograms. There's all kinds of things, all kinds of horror stories. So I'm gonna put this in your hand for the very first time uh. and just walk you through the process are you nervous yet? Of course. Always okay, nervous. Good. Right on. <laughs> nervous, <laughs> nervous is a good thing. <laughs> it, it does. It keeps, yeah. it keeps you in check right. of yourself. Right. So first thing I do with a guy is just get it in their hands. Yep. Feel it. Yep. It's different than other polishers. Yep. Now you turn it on. Yep. Okay. Spins okay. on a single axis, just like I said, right? Right, right. Okay. So what you will experience is that unlike a dual action polisher is that based on how you're tilting this mm -hmm. it's going to create additional friction and it's going to kind of want to grab and okay. it's going to kind of want to pull the polisher in different directions okay. so your goal beginning out is and that's the beauty of these new polishers is you can dial them way down so it's very slow rpm okay. So you don't want to put any pressure on it because initially what you want to do is you just want to get a feel for the polisher. You want to start feeling how it wants to grab the second you start putting up on what's called an edge. Okay. So what you're looking for is to keep it as flat as possible and just get a feel for the buffer as it starts working on the paint. Okay. Then you can start applying a pressure. Once you get through that little learning curve there, yeah. then you can focus on the paint and what you're trying to do. Because okay. right now, I mean, you're as fresh as they get. Yeah. Yeah. We're gonna try to be removing right. 2,000 grit sanding marks. Okay. So here's the buffer. Okay. Also, and what we're gonna start out with is ceramics. Ceramics polish, not a compound, a polish. Single product polishing system. I have found after training endless guys that the rule is that they want to use way too much polish. Right. Now, Tom over there, this behind the camera, yeah. the guy that formulated this stuff, right. he would like you to use a lot of polish. Mm, right. Because <laughs> then he's going to sell more stuff. Sure. <laughs> so I just tell guys, okay, you don't 
because as society we've been trained, more is always better. Right. So guys naturally default to that when it comes to polish. Yep. So it does not take much, especially at the beginning. So right now, you're at the beginning. Right. So what we're gonna do, and this particular pad is what's called a microfiber cutting pad. We're just gonna put a little in the middle, right here, there's four dollops, okay? okay? Just to get you started. Okay. So we're coming to come over here, We've got our scratch pattern. Put the pad down. Okay. Now remember, what you're trying to do is just get a feel. Don't worry about trying to remove these sanding marks yet. Okay. You just want to get a feel for the buffer. Okay. Feel how it wants to pull and grab. I've dialed it down to the lowest. Is it the lowest? Okay. okay. So just enough pressure to where you're holding it down and we're not gonna get a bunch of sling. Okay. That's all you're worried about right now. Okay. So turn on that trigger. Let's see how yeah. it, yeah, it immediately really wants to pull? Yeah. Okay, so now what I want you to do is kind of play around with the angle and see how it wants to pull in different directions. Okay. Can you feel that? Yeah, yeah up okay. down, so uh, yeah. So what you're focused on is that spindle right at the middle. Like okay. right now you're on an edge right here. You can't quite tell because right. I can see it here. Okay. So work to keep it flat like that. Okay. Now you can start looking at the paint. And because you have no experience, you have no idea how long it's gonna take me to remove these sanding marks. Okay. So let off the trigger, yep. pull back. Let's wipe this. Okay. Because you are a complete beginner. Let me grab a cloth. Okay. And this is where a lot of people in audience land are gonna freak out because I'm using a Costco, what I call a disposable yeah. microfiber, but you don't have to overthink that part. So you come over here, and I'm gonna grab a light. And I don't want the strobe light, <laughs> I just want a light light. So you see all our sanding marks here? Yeah. Obviously, there, there's no mystery there. So right here, you started to remove it because now we have some sanding marks that are, have disappeared and we have some shine. Okay. So because you're a complete beginner, this is literally your first time, yeah. you have no experience from which to draw from and say, oh, I know that I can polish approximately 30 seconds or a minute, I can use this much pressure, and then I can check. Right. So you don't, you don't even have anything to start with, but now you do. Now you can know, it's like, okay, I was probably holding that polisher maybe 20, 30 seconds, very little pressure, and you can see what happened. Something happened. Yeah. Something good happened, which is now there's less sanding marks versus more sanding marks. So now what you can do, now that you have at least a little bit of experience, now you can start working this area. Okay. So what you need to be aware of is that your sanding marks are like this, okay. which means that as a rule, You've got your pad that's approximately like this. Yep. You're gonna be overlapping that area okay. so that you can remove these sanding marks in this tighter area. Okay. What you also need to be aware of is that you have what's called a character line there and here. Those are your vulnerable areas where there will be a tendency because the friction will be built up on this area more than on a flat area where the friction of the entire pad is, is dispersed on a, on a larger area. Okay. We don't have to overthink that this is a test hood, it's not a customer's car, so you don't have to be overly cautious about that po point. So let's bring you back in, let's apply some more polish, and let's have you apply some more pressure and work it and keeping it flat. Okay. Because our first point is just to remove the sanding marks. We're gonna worry about anything else like swirl marks, holograms, after we do this initial, what's called the initial cut. Okay. We're introducing re more refined scratches to remove these more abrasive scratches. Okay. So we're still going to create a uniform scratch pattern. Yeah. It's just that now we're gonna do it with an actual polish and a polishing pad and a buffer rather than with sandpaper. Okay. Our next step is we have applied more polish because now Sean's gonna go back in. Now he has a little bit of experience. We've got four dollops of polish back on the pad. Sean, I'm gonna dial this up. We were at 800, let's dial it up to 1200. Okay. So just be prepared, there's gonna be more speed. Right. Keeping it flat. 
we go. You got the trigger all the way down? I do. Okay. Now what you're working for is keeping this pad as flat as, there we go, there we go. Now what you want to do is slowly move it back and forth across your sanding marks while maintaining flatness of your pad. And then you can go up and down your pad. There we go, flat. Flat. The pad, there we go. Okay, now back up, or let go the trigger. That's one of the things because this is really multitasking. Let's, let's stop it there. Okay, round three, we put some more polish, four little dot poles on it. I put the dot, dots uh, polish out further because we're working on two areas of this panel that Sean has not corrected these areas here. He's corrected right here. So Sean, let's dial this up to 1500 now, okay. right there. Okay and go to town and you know the areas that you have to focus yep, on. I do. Just as a reminder, remember, pad flat. Okay. Do that. Pad. Right there you went up on an edge. Yeah. And right now you need to bring the pad up like that. Okay. There we okay. go. Now okay. it's flatter and this is where you just have to control it because the pad's gonna wanna grab and, and send it in a direction that you may not want. Your polish, keep that rolling, Tom. What you're doing is you're actually going up on an edge, which is fine, okay. because that's what you need to do sometimes to create an additional cut. Okay. But you are going up on an edge that will cut it quicker, but it's also going to produce more swirl marks in the process okay. or holograms. Okay. As you polish, you'll notice that it's polishing and you can start seeing with your eye what's yeah. happening as you move the buffer away. Right. You can see like, oh, okay, I did some good damage over here. I can move back over here. You do some polishing. Then as you're still polishing, you move it away yeah. and you're working this area, but you can, you can interpret a lot with your eye while you're working. You don't have to just do a single section, pull it off, wipe it to be able to, to interpret what's going on. Okay. So here we are, let's wipe it. Okay. Because I actually have a few years of experience, mm -hmm. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna show you what I would do as someone with a lot of experience. So I've got my polish back on the pad. I have assessed with the light that there's still sanding marks here and here. Now what I'm not used to is working on this particular stand. This is kind of a new moment for me. So I'm gonna position my leg so I can put a little more pressure on it and kind of cut to the case. I'm actually gonna dial this up a little higher. Something a lot of guys don't realize is how long it can actually take to get the sanding marks totally removed. Because they're so fearful in burning the paint, not only do they tend to use too much polish, but they don't stick to the area long enough to actually produce the results that they want. So I'm going back and forth. I'm keeping the pad as flat as I can and I'm looking at the paint as I'm working. Obviously, if the paint is, if it's covered with the buffer, I can't see it. So I work it, and then as I move on, I glance and I see what kind of results I'm producing. Once I feel that I've done something, then I come in with a cloth, I wipe it, I check my results, then I determine, okay, based on the results I'm seeing, I need to hit this area more, I need to hit this area more, and a little bit over here, and I just keep doing it. I go in, pull back, check results, or I'm doing it, and I'm checking results as I'm doing it. So there's all these ways to interpret what's going on. 
Hopefully you saw what I'm trying to now deal with. I've put a couple more dollops of polish on my pad. I've dialed up the speed a little bit more because I'm the more experienced guy in this moment, so I'm used to it. And I wanna attack those areas in a good way and finish removing the initial sanding marks. I'm looking with my eye to the best I can without wiping it off to see if there's still some deep sanding marks that I need to get. And it looks like it should be about complete removal without holding a light up to it yet. Let's polish this very quickly. So at this point, I'm seeing the sanding marks are gone. And what I, now my next concern is removing any buffer trails, holograms, call it whatever you guys are comfortable with, which is where I will change pads. I will maintain the single polished product. All I'm gonna do is change pads and change the speeds. I'm gonna use the same polish and now I'm gonna go in for that next level of perfection. What I wanna do is I wanna take it from 4K to 8K. We have our two different pads, and what I mean by different is that one was with the ceramics, now I've switched pads, and I'm now using the D1 Polish Enhancer. I don't wanna co-mingle the polishes. It's not gonna make or break your world because honestly, the masses out there, they just don't have a developed eye. But at this level, because I was training a brand new guy that's never touched any of this stuff, I wanna come back now myself and I wanna produce those 8K results. So I do want to switch pads. I want a uncontaminated pad that only has a D1 enhancer polish on it. I'm gonna dial down my RPMs to 800 RPMs, and this is what's called jeweling. Now in the industry, there's so much hype, there's endless acronyms, endless terminology. It's, what, it's what's called a nomenclature of any industry. Every, every industry has it. The problem is, is for beginners, it becomes overly com confusing and convoluted because it's like, oh my gosh, I can't keep track. So jeweling is the process of the final finish polishing where you're coming in and it sounds glorified. It sounds sophisticated. Ooh, jeweling, jeweling. It's like, okay, you can call it whatever you want. It's the very last step. It's as good as it's going to get. So the D1 Polish Enhancer is as good as it's going to get, but I have switched out the pads. I have dialed down the RPMs, and now the only pressure I'm gonna be putting on this is really side to side pressure so I can control the buffer. It's not really about putting pressure downward. It's just about finessing the surface of this paint, clear coat, call it whatever you want, so that I produce those 8K results. And what I'm looking for at this point is I'm just watching my polish and see how it responds to the paint. Because really, if I finesse this properly, and I don't use too much polish at the beginning. I use just enough polish to do what I want it to do. I can finish this and virtually not even have to wipe it. Now I am going to wipe it. It's just that I'm not leaving a bunch of residue and wadded up uh, polish behind as I'm polishing. So I'm just finessing it. I'm jeweling it. You 
use whatever label makes sense in your brain. It's just the industry has so many labels and they're constantly coming up with new ones. I come up with new ones as often as I can too. Like, what's the one? Ribs, random, isolated, deep scratches. I call it dicks. Uh, and now I can't remember what the words are behind it because I'm just being a uh, smart aleck trying to stir the pot. Let's see, dicks. D-I-C-S. I can't remember now. If you watch one of my videos, one of my videos I explain it. So right there, you don't see any big wads of polish because I didn't use too much. I'm finessing it, I'm watching it as I go so I can basically finish it to perfection. But I still know there's a, a residue on this paint right now and that's where I'm gonna wipe it off. And, and, and quite honestly, this hood is not our best target because we already started out with this blem. But now we've just taken it to 8K results. And once again, way past deliverable results. The, 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 the masses would not be able to even know the difference between Sean, his work, and my work. Because they're just going to look at this paint and it's going to instantly look amazing and their brain's just gonna shut off because their brain is already registered. Wow, my paint looks amazing and they don't know how to discern that next level of perfection. So in conclusion, because I could not introduce this product prior because it just wasn't available, now it's available. Um, and, and I'll put a little link below this so if you wanna go on my website and, and read my comprehensive review on it, it's just what I've, come to label myself in my professional world is my sure thing. So as I'm testing all these endless polishes, and it's just like, hey, this polish is really good. Hey, this polish is really great. This polish can do that. Or suddenly I come into a situation where it's like, wait, what is happening here? It's like, oh my gosh, I've got a paying customer that I've got to make happy. I know what my sure thing is. It's been CSI. That's my sure thing. And I will just leave it with that.